Hi, uh, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, fireside chat with Dr. Ruby Gupta, who's joining us from the beautiful city of Dehradun today. Uh, she uh, is a, a, a truly accomplished uh, individual and inspiration. Um, uh, please correct me, Dr. Ruby, if I if I introduce you incorrectly somewhere, but. Uh, I know you started your journey with uh, studying science and then you uh, switched over to creative writing at some point of time, yes. uh, dabbling in journalism where you, uh, I think you work with the uh, Mirror Today, um, the Press Journal, the Tribune, and MP Chronicle and many other places uh, yes. before you committed yourself to writing and uh, the ac academia. Um, so far, uh, our, uh, our uh, audience today, I just want to uh, 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 mention that Dr. Ruby is a published author of many books, um, including but not limited to Maya, a novel, Kushwan Singh, Reality and Myth, The Fulfillment, a collection of short stories, uh, A Degree in Death, um, which was um, uh, long listed for Crossword Award, uh, No Illusions in Zanadu, uh, which was published by Bloomsbury, and most recently, the the Secret of Life in Pagoda, uh, which was unveiled at the International Agatha Christie Festival in uh, September 2022, and for which uh, she won the International Writer in Residence Award. Uh, congratulations. Um, and I also have, uh, heard that this book is being converted into uh, uh, for the screen by Almighty Motion Pictures. So uh, excellent, excellent uh, to know about all what you have done. And you continue to do at the Indian Military Academy, where uh, you're a professor and uh, the head of the department, the humanities department. Uh, I, I think uh, I've probably summarized a lot in 30 seconds, uh, which probably doesn't do justice to your, your talent and background. But thank you so much for being a part of um, our forum today and for talking to um, readers and, and uh, budding authors and inspiring them. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Ruby. Thank you. You. It's such a pleasure to be here on your forum and I'm so glad to meet up with your readers and I'm sure we'll have a scintillating time talking about books and writing. And just to correct you a bit, uh, the Agatha Christie Festival Foundation had invited me because of my previous novel, okay. which was um, okay. Xanadu. Yeah. So uh, no illusions in Xanadu was the novel uh, for which they had uh, invited me to the festival okay. in England. And okay. uh, my was unveiled over there so just a Achha. slight <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you, you for correcting me. the facts you know being crime <laughs> right <laughs> yes as a absolutely absolutely so uh dr ruby to just probably get started with the conversation um we'd, we'd really like to know how your um journey to becoming an author and then after becoming an author has been. Uh, so if you can tell us a little bit, a bit about that, it will be great. Well, actually, my journey as an author became uh, began several decades ago. And uh, strangely enough, it began in school, although I had forgotten all about it. And there's a very interesting story the young people would be interested to know. So what happened was, and I have lived all over the country. So my father was posted in Pune and I was studying in Pune in Hutchings High School. So I did my ninth and 10th over there. And uh, when I was in class 10, we had a new teacher, uh, Mr. Huck for English for that day. And he okay. told us he had an assignment that you write a short story. And I don't know from where I got the idea. I was so much into Agatha Christie and I wrote this short story within that one period or, you know, within in that which was the boy who knew too much. And it was a from Agatha Christie's murder at the vicarage. And uh, in my story, what happens is there is a priest and his young and beautiful wife is found murdered in the woods. And there is this boy who gets to know who has murdered her. And, you know, the boy who knew too much. And ultimately, he also gets murdered because he tries to blackmail the murder. Now, I okay. Oh, me in class 10 could think of <laughs> and <laughs> the Huck was so um, intrigued and uh, so impressed with that story that the next day after he had checked the assignments at the, the class assignments he uh, took my name to the class and I used to be this very shy intro person 
who didn't want any attention on herself and he suddenly called me and he said you know you must read out this story in front of the class <laughs> and and i was like my god no so somewhere from there the the germ of writing started but then it was much much later when i was at the crossroads of my life thinking in which direction i should go and i thought that i should do something which i love and which is writing and so i began writing and uh, decided to do my diploma in creative writing and i started with writing articles then short stories then poems then did interviews then journalistic career and then finally i came to writing books first non fiction and then fiction so it's okay. been a long journey over 25 years of writing excellent and and uh, what would you say is the most fulfilling part of being an author uh, i mean um, in this journey uh, where where are those uh, the, the highlight the, the peaks of excitement uh, that you experience actually when i create something new or i come across a plot which completely holds my attention that is the most exciting thing for me because uh, you know i come across a plot and it it just grips me and i get lost in that world and then the entire process of creation i think the creativity itself gives you a kick so when i'm creating something when i'm in the flow of writing and create like and creating the uh, and the plot and the red herrings i become so lost in it and um, uh, it's it's like falling in love or it's like meditation and i forget to eat forget to sleep so that's <laughs> the thing i feel the creativity the creation so as a mystery author um, i mean you talked about the red herrings and the plot um, i think um, um, i mean the success of any good mystery book is also in the telling of uh, what is to be told and what is to be hidden or what is to be expertly hidden uh, so does it require any any personal experiences obviously you can't draw from that uh, because you you might not have ever seen anything like that so so how does that work no oh, actually uh, you know you do draw on your personal experiences M most of my novels are based on true events and some which i have experienced personally so i do draw on personal events as well to plot my uh, you know the the storyline and the theme and where it is going so it, it does play a role definitely okay. so okay. my novels uh, <laughs> entirely based on true events actually okay. all right Ex excellent um so uh, besides agatha christie which obviously i i think has been a true impression on you as a as a youngster uh, what are the uh, who are the authors what kind of books do you like to read indian uh, international authors you admire or who you think uh really have inspired you uh we'd love okay. to know about that i i'll start right at the beginning so i i was a lonely child and for me books became my best growing up so i began reading children's books and comics and then i stumbled onto enid blyton and enid blyton uh -huh. was my favorite children's author i used to devour her books read them multiple times and completely I, i loved her books like anything ranging from three then you know the malry towers and the famous five so those kind of books mystery books she also she used to write children's mysteries so i started with the uh, enid blyton then went on to agatha christie of course and what i realized was that i love fast paced crime uh, <laughs> mystery <laughs> kind of. so then obviously then i went out on arthur conan doyle and uh, of course dan brown and uh, arthur haley sydney sheldon and uh, so many others even james hadley chase so they they are some of my favorite authors and uh, also of course ian rand too so if i have to slot them then i love fiction the most stories which are my first love but i also read non fiction and in non fiction i love spiritual books uh, mm -hmm. because i am in spirituality and also scientific books. so i read them as well and the authors i have just named amongst the indian authors i would say uh, like uh, amitav ghosh i like amitav ghosh a lot so few indian authors but mostly in, because at the time when we were growing up it was all about western authors so <laughs> <laughs> with western authors actually so that that's been uh, uh, what i love reading i used to love reading actually and i, I i'm I, glad 
I'm glad that 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 uh, narrative is changing, and we have authors like you in India now. And uh, I mean, I, I'm hoping in another time, another conversation, someone would point your work as their inspiration. I hope so. <laughs> I hope that happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, I mean, I, I also uh, write a bit, but uh, mystery is one genre which, or crime and thrillers, it's one genre which um, I'm not not exactly. Exactly sure of how to write or how to go about it. So uh, tell us a little bit about how you choose your subject, um, how you draw up the plot, and then how do you go about narrating that story as a as an author who needs to hold the cards very close to her heart. Correct. And you know, um, I have written across genres. Like I have written nonfiction, I have written poetry, mm. I have written academic books also, and I have written mm. fiction also. So all of them call for a different. <sighs> when writing and a different sure. style, different narration, definitely. But what I do uh, for my part is that I have a very scientific bent of mind and I do a lot of research, a lot of analysis, and I apply a lot of research analysis, factual information. Systematically, I go about choosing my theme and the plotting and the development of the storyline. So first I will choose a theme or a plot which catches my attention. And then I will decide, okay, how I have to build it up. So then I will build it up in a step-by-step -step process. First of all, I'll have a small summary that if, for instance, let's say it's wow. a murder mystery. Yeah. I'm going to decide what is the plot. And I cannot write a simple murder mystery, like a serial yeah. killer who is a crazy chap and who's going and killing people. I don't write that kind of mystery. I write which is complex which is layered so for creating layers you need to have a plot you need to have a subplot as well and you need to have side plots so i kind of you know pen down i have these see i'll show you i have these kind of uh, spiral notebooks and okay. you know when i went to the home of agatha christie i came to know that she also had these spiral notebooks in which to <laughs> jot down <laughs> Her plots and characters so they list everything you know one two three four murder weapon one murder weapon two murder weapon three victim one victim two victim three suspect one suspect suspect three red herring one red herring two so i have this list and then i have the chapterization although my chapter chapterization may not be concrete right at the beginning but i have some kind of rough idea that in chapter one let's say a dead body is found is the dead body uh, suicide made to look like murder, which I did in my a degree in death? Or is it a clear case of murder? Or is it a suspicious accident? What is it? So in my first chapter, a dead body has to be found. Because <laughs> I want to get <laughs> And then I investigate. How does the investigation uh, you know, go on? And then the chapter 2, chapter 3, and then I decide. And then the finale. So this is the way I do it in a very systematic way. I do the plot. So that's what it is. Sounds grisly. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, 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 do you do you um, run your uh, uh, plots and sub plots through uh, maybe you know um, someone close by, like a good friend, or maybe someone in your family, or or is it like one big bang at the end? You get a surprise, and uh, how how does that work? I do don't run it by anybody because I'll tell you there is a theory which I uh, which I read about and I really yeah. feel it sometimes what happens is that if you're very fired up about a plot or an idea and you talk about it with one person all your energy and your fire about that plot or the subject matter goes in the talking instead of uh -huh. pouring the computer nowadays we write on the computer <laughs> so you know yeah. the fizzles up out. So I prefer to keep it in me so that it comes to a boil and the bo boiling <laughs> over boil. <laughs> I've talked about yeah. thoughts or my themes with anybody. And I've seen because right sometime back I was contemplating writing something and uh, I discussed it with people and now I don't have the urge <laughs> to write it anymore because it's over and done with you know i've already it's already out of my system yeah yes. so uh, i mean this is my take on it sure sure uh, so how does this um, like obviously for a crime novel this is how how you proceed but um, how about i mean i saw that you've written something known as uh, 
tech basic technical communication and advanced technical communication and that's like just a world apart from you know uh, <laughs> the secret of the life in pakoda so i i just wanted to know uh, i mean how does one one write both both the kinds of books correct correct so like I said the approach is completely different. So what happened was that I was a professor in HOD at an engineering seniors. So as you probably know that in engineering every uh, term you have to study about six to eight subjects, and it's very taxing for the students to study so many subjects. So I thought, and I always have a soft corner for <laughs> my students, whether it's in IMA or uh, this thing. I thought, why not I write a simple book for them, which is very concise and precise, yet comprehensive at the same time, according to the syllabus, which they are. So they have to just pick up one book, and it is so concise, so precise, contains everything that they need to do, and they get very good marks. <laughs> so it, it is about communicating for technocrats, MBA and BTech students. So with okay. the object, being my, uh, to. crack their exams and to study in a short period of time i wrote basic technical communication and advanced technical communication it was based on my own experiences as a professor and also i consulted many books wherein you know you have information of stuff and all and kind of made it concise and precise so that's how i wrote that for my btech and mba students and i wrote a poetry book for my okay. <laughs> for my ima students cadets because they had poetry in the syllabus and they had different poems of different genres and they had to run from pillar to post to get some poem from some book another poem from some other book so i thought why not again write one book where all the poems are there <laughs> the explanation the reference to context is there the biography of the poet is there so that they have everything together in one book. so excellent so these Very three books for my students <laughs> very thoughtful and i i'm sure you were a popular teacher and a professor <laughs> i wish i had i had teachers like that <laughs> thank you so uh, so dr ruby uh, um, another uh, another question um, that i have is about uh, your book uh, you mentioned like no illusions in uh, zanadu just maybe tell us a little bit about what what the the the, the plot there is and and what why readers uh, like that so much yeah so before no illusions in zanadu i had written a degree in death which was based yeah. on my experience at this university where i was uh, working and from there my plot took off uh, and i wrote a degree in death which is a very complex uh, story which has geopolitical connotations also about india and china and tibet those kind of connotations are there so i created a detective just like hercule poirot of agatha christie who is an intellectual detective who works with the little gray cells so to speak the right. <laughs> shantanu no boss because in a university a professor will be the logical detective so he joins hands with the inspector and he solves the case and people like the character of professor shantanu boss so much they wanted him to solve another mystery and it was like <laughs> one murder mystery have to write another murder mystery and i wanted to do something completely different i had done three in uh, you know uh, which was complex with geopolitical things i wanted to write something more uh, I, i would say uh, breezy <laughs> so i decided to base it in the mumbai film industry because we are all crazy about bollywood <laughs> and i thought something like the you know the reigning superstar of the mumbai film industry is found dead in his study on the night on which he throws a grand bash uh, to celebrate his 30 years in the film industry and he's found dead and then professor shantanu bos happens to be staying in his house and his house is this 30 story house there so it's a full on masala bollywood film kind of a novel <laughs> so, oh. very nice and, and how was the reaction or uh, amongst the books that you've written all the books that you've written I mean, how is the audience reaction been? And, and uh, is there anything that stands out in your mind, saying that hey, that day something happened, someone said something or some wrote something, and I like it made my day. Uh, okay, okay. So, uh, uh, well, my books on uh, which I've written for the students, of course, they have been immensely popular, and students have always told me that they are so happy they could have this kind of book. So that is heartening for me, and that those books are also prescribed in the syllabus of various Indian universities. 
so th- that is a very good feedback for me that you know it is it's so popular and so well liked that's that now a degree in death i'll tell you i meanwhile i had left this engineering college and i joined the indian military academy and uh, last year i know they he said that one student started he got hold of my novel in the library and he started reading and he got so psyched up and he said that now murders are going to take place the way ruby <laughs> ma'am has a really good heartening uh, feedback was uh, there is a there was a very famous journalist very renowned journalist mr raj kavar who wrote questions yes. so mr raj kavar he passed away recently <laughs> he re- yeah. and he said you know i i mean he called me up and then he wrote articles or he reviewed the two of my novels also and he said the you know that i minded of the while reading your novels they completely like the plot is like that of agatha christie she uh, and i remember what he said that i was reminded of a uh, of a novel where uh, you know they all these people are characters are having dinner and one person drops dead on the din- uh, on the uh, yeah. you know dining table um, he right. said films are like that and your red herrings and the twist in the tail and your detective <laughs> thinking and who's intellectual and uh, his words were really heartening because first of all he was so senior like yeah. 80 plus and he's uh, you know read so much and he compared my novels and the writing style to that of agatha christie which was a great my next uh, question brings me to um so a lot of uh, young budding writers around um not just uh, in bangalore uh, not just in dehradun but in all across india all across the world um if you were to say something to them in terms of uh, you know um in like just to inspire them or tell tell them about uh, like maybe one piece of wisdom that you want to impart to them saying that hey you know um, this is how to go about it what what would that be well you know today's generation is the 2 minute maggi and instant coffee generation <laughs> <laughs> so to them i would say that if you want to be a writer you should be ready to put in lot of work and you have to read a lot if you want to write you cannot be a writer without reading this is a fallacy people think oh just sit down and write no you can't do that it you need years in reading intensely first of all wide reading then read the genre that you want to write about or right in that particular genre and then you read it from the perspective of understanding the narrative style understanding the character build up and then you read lot of books on technique of writing and then you sit up <laughs> to write in a nutshell i just want to say that be prepared for a long hard lonely road to becoming a <laughs> <laughs> so are you working on anything new right now is there another book in the works tell us a little well, bit about that really uh, it takes me a long while for example my first novel maya uh, it took me 10 years to write that novel so the fastest non fiction i write fairly quickly in in a matter of months like technical communication and all but fiction which is my actual love takes me years so the fastest i wrote was a degree in death which took me 3 years and maya was the longest took me 10 years so writing a book is a long so that my i would say that my latest one is the one which has just been published and uh, that's the one which i think readers should read because it is uh, based on true events and uh, so i i sure. really feel a debate on these things and I, and i put it across in the form of this suspense thriller uh, which entertains also and which brings you to questions and it is 90% based on true events entirely absolutely i i think on behalf of story zone and behalf of uh, all the audience members and on my behalf for sure uh, i just want to thank you dr ruby for taking out the time um and uh, we are very jealous that you are in dehradun and we are not uh, <laughs> we are very envious that uh, you got to go to the agatha christie festival and we were not invited but uh, trust you me we will we will uh, try to uh, you know uh, do one up there and and try to uh, express ourselves in our own creative ways and uh, we hope our paths cross in person soon uh, thank you so much for uh, the lovely time and um, meeting you and seeing you uh, 
is uh, has been like uh, my highlight of the day so thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for joining us thank you for inviting me it's been an absolute pleasure i really enjoyed all your questions and uh, had a real fun time and it's been the highlight of my date as well and thanks <laughs> to people who have joined in this evening on of janmashtami they taken time to join here so mm-hmm. thank you so please be in touch read my books and uh, i am to be found everywhere on facebook insta twitter linkedin everywhere so uh, let's let's start. thank you all right thank you everyone thank you readers thank you audience uh, have a good evening good night be kind to each other and we'll see you again in another episode of our fireside chats thank you dr ruby good night and take care thank you good night bye bye take care